Afternoon friends, second project of the afternoon. I've got a new client in today, Dave from Nottingham, and um, I've just done one of his guitars, a Telecaster, and this is another of his guitars. Got a loose strap in there, I'll sort that out in a minute. I'm going to show you what it is, and it is a stunner. But look, just fantastic. Look, neck through. Is it neck through or set neck back? Is oh my god, is that one piece? That looks like one piece of wood. That can't be one piece of wood, surely. That looks like one piece of wood to me. No neck heel there, no... Uh... Can't see a join, can I see a join? That is amazing. Anyway, custom line. SC, Arlie Benton, single cut, custom. SC custom line. What a fabulous looking guitar, nice weight to it. Doesn't have the thickness, but lovely, lovely weight and a stunning, Stunning instrument to look at. Wow, just look at that. We've got a push-pull coil tap. I like to see a push-push. Much easier to operate. They're a bitch to pull when you've got sweaty fingers. Uh, I imagine that'll split both at the same time. You can pull them both in single coil mode. Double coil or humbucker mode. What a stunning guitar this is. So why is it in? Well, it's brand new. Uh, something else we're going to need to look at. It. Grover tuners on the back there. Fantastic looking instrument, great quality looking thing. Binding on the neck, binding all round, binding everywhere. It just looks stunning. How much are these? 190 quid, I'm not sure, 230, whatever. Looks stunning. So it's in for its first ever setup. Um, and also it's gonna have a pickup upgrade. These pickups are hit and miss. With some wood, they sound good. With other wood, they don't. But anyway, going with Blues engine, iron gear blues engine, iron gear rolling mill. Look at that. Let's have a look at the output of the rolling mill. Do the, which is which, by the way? One's bridge, one's neck. Don't know which is which. The uh, pole spacing 52 neck. So we do it. All oh, right, okay, I'll have to find out. I have to do some research and find out which is which. Is the blues engine the neck and the uh, rolling mill the bridge? Anyway, I'll work that out in a bit. They're going in there. Um, I will Im I'm imagining it's going to need, probably going to need a fret level. The only bad thing on this guitar, the only thing I don't really like, and like I said, the pickups can be hit and miss. They're good in some guitars, not in others. The only thing that I don't like on this guitar is the nut. I think that's a graphite nut. I'd like to see a bone nut on there, but we're not going for a bone nut now. We'll leave that nut on because of the expense. We're going to see if it needs a fret level or not. The problem with putting a bone nut on here is I only have bone nut blanks and I have to cut a nut from a blank and I do charge for it. I charge £55 to cut one from a blank and to fit it. Uh, when you're having other work, I'd charge you £45. Um, and we didn't want to go that route just yet. We'll see how things are with the fret. So I've not plugged it in. I've not played it. I just wanted to get the starter video um, done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it in. I've got my arm already warmed up, valves are warming up. I'm going to plug it in two minutes, have a little play, but I'm going to come back, we're going to loosen the strings, we're going to go across with fret rocker and see what state the frets are in. But stunning looking guitar. So I've had it plugged in, I've had a play, and the pickups, yeah, weeder, really weedy. Now I play metal, but I can play virtually, I can play any style, it's just I prefer to play metal. But I've played them clean, I've played them bluesy, and I've played them metally. Metally, we don't have the punch for metal. I got an overdrive push in the front of my amp, and we still didn't have that, you know, that sharpness, that clear cut sound that I actually like. So the pickups are a little bit weedy. Now it's odd, in a way, in as much as these pickups do sound good in certain guitars with certain woods, uh, but they are not my favourite. So I think a pickup upgrade is definitely, definitely warranted. Um, but everything else works fine. The only thing I don't like is the nut. I would like to see a bone nut on there. Uh, the bridge and the stock top piece look fantastic, really, really good quality. The push pull coil tap works absolutely fine. The volumes and the tones work fine. So I'm going to get the strings loosened, I'm going to get the strings off, and uh, we're going to have a look at the frets and see if it needs a fret level or not. If it does need a fret level, I might recommend we change that nut, but we'll see. It's a graphite knot, it'll be okay. Tone-wise, it's not gonna do a great deal. I just don't think it's gonna last, and it feels, it feels like plastic. You know, not my favorite things, but what do you expect from one of have got cut corners somewhere? So let me get the camera moved, uh, get the strings off, and we'll come back and we'll have a look at these frets. I've removed the strings. Um, 
loosen the truss rod. The true truss rod is now slack. It's a two-way truss rod. So this is the neutral position. Just there, look, no tension on it at all. And with the truss rod like that in that position, loose, the neck should actually be straight. And in this case, praise the Lord, the neck is, oh, it's not exactly straight, but it's very, very close to the first. I'm just going to give it just a little nip. So we're loose, loose, just going to give it, I'm going to turn it from here to about just there. And I should just be enough to remove that little bit of relief we've got there. And now that neck is dead straight, and that's fine. Tiny, tiny gap there, just, see, just again, just that much. And that is what we call player strength. That's as straight as we're going to get it. In fact, it's raised just a little bit there, a little bit of backbone. So I'm just going to ease that off, bring it back in. Sometimes next, just undulate ever slightly up, up in one area, down in the other, and we take an average and we eyeball it and we look to see where we are with the eyeball. Because don't forget, the playing surface is not the actual fingerboard, the playing surface is the tops of the frets. So I have that straight, and I'm happy that that is as straight as we're going to get it. I'm not going to knock any frets in, we're just going to go over a fret rocker and we're going to check, see if there are any high ones. I'm going to grab a marker just in case. I'd be surprised if this doesn't need a fret level, but let's see. Okay, second fret. High, as high as a kite. All the way across. I, I'm marking three areas, centre being two, far side one, centre two, near side three. And that way I could draw a map. And I could go three with a one or a two underneath, and it means areas one and two on fret three are high. But here we go. Area two on that one. We've already got two high frets out of the first two. And there you go, this is when I guarantee this is going to need a complete fret level. It means that knot's got to come off. That knot could be a bitch because it's been painted over here. So we've got to make sure it doesn't crack when we remove it. And that's the problem with these cheaper guitars. More could go wrong with them. Because corners have been cut. I mean, that's got a high spot there, but it's hardly worth bothering about. Let's just check it again. So I forgot which one it is. I did get a note from Dave with this guitar telling me to do everything that needs doing. If it needs a fret level, give it a fret level. Change the pickles, one of you. Again, that is a tiny bit high, but hardly worth bothering with. But much better than I thought it would be. Another high one there. But not as bad as I thought they would be. On there. So we are going to go with the fret level. Was expected. Okay, let's do a count up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten high frets. 
out of 22. Not bad at all, you know, less than half. Uh, but still needs to do it, so let's get everything marked up. I will draw a map because that way, I mean, this pen won't rub off because it's a permanent marker, but in the past I've used non permanent marker and you get a bit more and it's all rubbed off. We need to do, do it again. But yeah, we're going to go with fret level with this, which means we're going to remove a knot. The thing about it is, I can do the fret level, get all the pickups out, because I'm going to be replacing the pickups anyway. Get the pickups out, get the nut off. The, my area of concern on this is getting this nut off clean, because I can't do a fret level without removing the nut. So I'm going to just go and cut through the lacquer right now. I may need to stick it in the box. Let's just see how we go on. I've got a brand new blade in this standing knife, so we should be okay. But don't worry about it. I didn't cut anything I shouldn't cut. I'm just going to cut through the lacquer. It's not horrible. What I don't want to do is knock this out and take a big chunk out. It's already taken a bit of paint off there anyway. So we are just going to take a mallet, and these can go horribly wrong, and I'm sure the owner knows that these can go horribly wrong. I'm just going to take the nylon end of a, a fretting mallet, and I'm just going to tap the knot, and there you go. Seems to be out, and how clean has it come out? That has come out as clean as we possibly could have got it out. That, my friends, is how we remove a knot cleanly. I'm really, really pleased with that. So yeah, took a bit of wood with it. It's a graphite knot. They're not the worst knot in the world. They're not brilliant either. Uh, but the good thing about that, we've got the wood on the bottom. There's too much glue on that. But we've still got the wood on there. It means it'll fit back in perfectly. And we're not going to get it in the wrong place. So the knot's removed nice and cleanly, which is always a relief. So I'm going to zoot on, I'm going to um, let the owner know that we are going to go with a complete fret level. I'm going to oink the pickups out, it means I can look at all the uh, electrics and everything inside. I don't need to remove these, I'll just screw these in so they don't fall out, we don't lose them. So all this I'm going to do off camera, I'm going to get the pickups out, we're ready for putting the new pickups in. I've just tightened one of these, so these are nice and tight, these have got a strap lock things on there. One little bleb on the body there under the lacquer, that's not a problem. Uh, I can leave the tuners on. I'm going to put this, I'm probably going to put this on the uh, on the jig to level the frets. Let's just see where we are. So camera off, I'm going to oik all the pickups out, get everything prepared for leveling the frets. I'm probably going to level the frets, not in the dark, but I am going to have to uh, put my night light on and work on the other bench. So back soon. Have enough light to show you the electrics or the inside the control cabinet here. And we have mini pots and we have a push pull pot for the coil splits. Uh, very standard wiring. I know how this all works, the coil splits. Uh, so nothing untoward there. So I'm going to, there's no plastic ties as such in there, but there are twist ties in there. I will take those off. And I'll put some plastic ties in there once I put the new pickups in. So I'm going to desolder everything in there, remove the pickups with the covers, um, and I'll find out how these are wired in. We'll be wiring these in once I've done the fret level. Uh, so next thing we're going to do on this is we're going to get all the electrics out, get it all set up on the jig. May not need to use the jig, we'll see. Um, but I do like working on the own built neck jig, so I'm probably going to get it on there. A little bit more faff, but you know, it's the right way to do it. Get all the electrics out, get it all set up on a jig ready for leveling. I may get the frets level tonight, I don't know. If I don't get them level tonight, it'll have to be tomorrow. It might be, I might be pushing it to get this done tomorrow then, because I'm actually doing a refret on a old guitar, a vintage, a 1959 Hofner, and I need to get that refret done tomorrow. So let me crack on with this, see where we are, get it all jigged up. Might get the frets done tonight, might not, we'll see. So I've moved over to the night table. I have a spotlight, LED spotlight up here. So it gives me fantastic light to work. You can see, and I'm just getting my tools ready for this fret level. And 
quite simple. I decided not to go on the jig in the end. What I have done is, I have a guitar body all padded up and clamped at this end. So it ain't going to move. We are padded underneath and we are in the next stand there and everything is solid. And what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to stand on ceremony, I'm going to crack straight on with the job. And first I'm going to hit the high frets with my levelling file, diamond file, precision flat, great piece of kit this, I got it from Chris Allsop on eBay UK. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to level just these spots where they are high, where we've got optimal as high. So I'm going to get my fret leveller, it is in the cupboard over here. I do tend to, between jobs, I do tend to put tools away and keep the workshop tidy. But anyway, we're just going to go and we're going to spot level. Good thing about this is it will take the high spots from the frets that need it. And when I'm as level as I want to be, I'll feel the change in the file. Like it'll get smoother and lighter and I'll know I've removed the material I want to remove. But it removes a lot of material quite quickly. And this one fret where I needed everything new, we're just going to check it. And that's almost level. And let the file do the work, not pressing down hard. Let the file do the work, that's what it's here for. And that one's done. Up to the others that need work. And it's not particularly hard fret wire, I can feel it's not hard fret wire, so it's probably 12% nickel silver. Just going to go down, check with frets that needed the levelling. That one's a little bit high there and there. So I did check that the neck was dead straight with a not straight edge there and you'll see that material has been removed just straight across being really savage with his frets but you know show him no mercy show him his boss but yeah, this is going well I know they look rough they're always going to look rough it's soft fret wire it always scratches up pretty quickly and levels off pretty quickly but I'm just getting a level to work with find it's own level. I'm not being savage. But this is removing the high spots that were causing the problem. Don't worry about the scratches or anything, we're going to get rid of all of them. I'm doing the proper level with a levelling beam in a minute. And that's all the high spots gone. And that's that. Now we're not level yet, we are going to be doing the proper levelling, we're finished with the file now, brutal. Levelling beam from Crimson Guitars, precision straight edges, I have emery cloth taped to each precision flat surface, I have some 240 grit on the base, 400 grit on the top, we're going to do the main levelling with the 240 which will bring, get rid of most of these deep scratches from the file. Then we're going to finish off with the 400, which will get rid of the scratches from the 240, make them much easier to polish later on. But before we do that, we need to mark up all of the frets. This is permanent marker. And we're looking to level all of the frets now in one go. Now they are more or less level. I'll level the lot. 
that's why I'm using an 18, well it's not an 18 inch beam, it's a, uh, it's, I think it's a 16 inch beam that. I'm going to let the levelling beam do the work, it's made of aluminium or aluminium to the American followers. I did have a steel one but that ended up being not so reliable. So I went at it straight and then it came back worse than it went out so I binned it and I bought this one. So, 240 grit, I'm just going to get my brush. And I'm just going to clean this off because I used it yesterday. So we're just going to brush it off. This is emery board or emery cloth. That's a lot longer than the paper. So you can use it many, many times. And even if it's been used like this, has been used quite a bit, it's still good to go. Because we're not removing stupid amounts of material. These frets are now just about level. Anyway, that's why we want to the pen. So we're going to make sure I get the 240 grit side down. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the radius. Now when I get to this end I'll be overlapping slightly because we always follow in a straight line to maintain the proper radius. If it was a compound radius we'd follow the strings and we wouldn't overlap. So if it was 16 at this end, 10 at that end, you'd just follow that and keep your compound radius here like a cylinder. But this is going to be like a, like a, a beer can shape or a soda can shape. It's just a tube. So we're going to start in the middle Lightly, we don't have to press down hard, we don't have to press down at all, just nice and light. And let it find the radius itself. And if you've got any pen left, like in these areas we have here, and a little bit, oh we haven't got any down here, it means there's a high fret somewhere around here. So we're just going to concentrate on this area. So all of the pen has been removed. And that to me says that these frets are level because we were all the tops of all the frets or so now just to make sure we've been using it that way I'm going to brush it again try and keep everything on camera so you can see I'm going to turn it 180 degrees and I'm going to go the opposite way with the well making sure we're 240 at the bottom which we are and I'm just going to go again just light ever so lightly just following the radius back over and following the radius That feels really quite smooth, so I think we're done. We're going to just brush away all the crap. Permanent marker, so if I'm cheating you can see all of the tops of all of the frets are silver. So we're going to go across again with the fret rocker. Make sure all of the frets are level. And that is how you level frets. I'm going to crack on tonight, I'm going to crown them in a minute. I'm not going to faff about, I'm not going to waste any time. The more I get done today, the less, the less I've got to do tomorrow. Chances are, the client can have his two guitars back tomorrow. I can get both guitars done, fret levelled and set up inside 24 hours. How good a service is that for you guys? Two guitars from start to finish. And I've not been rushing, I've been taking my time. These frets are my friends spot on level we're going to go again with the pen because we're not finished yet because we had a bit across with 240 but we're now going to go across with 400 grit because the scratches were, the scratches we put in with the file were deep then we followed most of them out using the 240 grit, but it's still some quite deepish scratches. But now we're going to go across with 400, we're going to remove the deeper scratches and it's going to be a lot easier to polish. But don't forget we scratched them all this way. With the, two, with the 400, there were many of them left and when we come to polish them, we're going to polish that way. So we're going to get all of those scratches out. Now when you get these guitars new, they're not all polished out properly because you don't spend that much time on it, but I do. 
So 400 grit now, that's your 400 grit side. Like I say, make sure it's clean. And all we're looking to do now is just remove all of the pen. Shouldn't take us long because the frets are level, or they should be level. Back to the middle. Over to the far side. Back to the middle. And there shouldn't be any pen on the tops of the frets. There's a little bit there. Let's just follow it. And we'll turn it around 180 degrees like we did on the last one. And that, my friends, is the frets all level. Let's just go with the brush. Final check. Hardly scratched at all now. These will be really easy to get out when we'll polish later. Precision. Check. Been really gentle with the rocker. Beautiful job. The main gist of the work comes in the crowning and polishing. Not so much the crowning, but certainly the polishing. Now the problem with this guitar is it's a set neck. Or it's a one piece guitar. It means we can't detach the neck from the body to make it easier to crown the fret. So we're going to have to do it over the body. It's why I've taped everything off here. Because we're going to be filing across the body. And we don't want to be filing across the body, but if we are filing across the body, we don't want to ding the body by if we slip or anything. So cover it in this tape. I may also get some chamois leather and just cover this area just in case we slip with a file. Very rare slip with a file but it does happen. Anyway the frets are spot on level so I'm just going to give a quick spray of some naphtha. Yes well we don't get naphtha in England we get um, super lighter fluid and this will evaporate more or less. Just going to clean the fingerboard with this that evaporates quick as I pour it on so I just want to get that on there just to clean everything up and I'll give that a wipe because once it's all clean and degreased it will take masking tape easier and better so I'm going to tape up the whole fingerboard now ready for crowning then polishing the frets See that's it, that's all evaporated. What hasn't evaporated is it has all evaporated. Just about look at that, looks all gone. And that means the tape will take it's going to have a few minutes just to evaporate. But you'll see now, hopefully, you'll see the frets are all flat where they were crowned going this way. That cross section had that D shape on its side. We've now flattened them and we've got to rebuild that crown like so. So, what we're going to do is we're going to tape up the fingerboard. I'm going to remove the clamp from this side. Clamp bracket protection just to show we've not damaged anything. Everything always supported and always clamped properly. And now the guitar is free. You'll see we were supported underneath, supported underneath. Just going to check again that the neck is dead straight. I know it's dead straight because I checked it about five times. And there you go, superb. Now remember also the playing surface is the tops of the frets, not the actual fingerboard. Sometimes fingerboards do undulate a little, they sort of go up and down along the length. But anyway, that is done. So what we need to do next is we need to tape up the fingerboard, leave just the frets exposed. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move back just so I'm going to keep the tape running, keep everything live. I'm just going to do ever so quickly, I'm going to show you how I do this. So I'm just going to take some tape. We always put a strip down the side because it makes it easier to remove all of the tape later. We just want to go to the top of the binding, slightly under the fret there. There's a reason for this. And again, I just want to a little bit like a little bit short on that. Just to show you how I'm going to tape up the fingerboard. Because I'm going to do it 
offline, I'm going to keep going live because I need to go and get a cup of tea. I'm probably going to get something to eat as well shortly. So, just taped up there just to show you that I'm, I'm going to tape up fingerboard. And now we're going to mask everything off, just leave the frets exposed like so. I'm going to show you how to do it. And I use three different widths of tape. I've got this one inch or 25 mil, I've got some 19 mil, and I've got some 6 mil. And this is how we go about it. Blah 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 blah. We want to get to these sort of areas. We get some tape, let's rip it down the line, down the middle, and that way you see we're saving a little bit of tape rather than using two bits, we use one and a half bits. So that's it. So I'm going to section off the whole of the neck, just leave the frets exposed. Once that's all done, I'm going to come back and we're going to set uh, or start crowning all of these frets. I'll show you that in a little while. And moving on, now I've got fingerboard all taped up. I'm going to be crowning the frets, and as I explained before, going in that direction, we've flattened the tops of the frets and we need to rebuild that crown, and that's going to be going that way, so it's like a D shape on its side. Um, like I say, we've flattened, we need to get rid of that. So nowadays, it's a lot easier to do it than we did in the old days. We're using this file, I'm not going to show everything, but this is my Z file from Stumac. Nearest you is a short, steep angle cut, and nearest me, there's a shallow, long cut. It's a diamond file. Shortcut your side, long cut mine, flip it over, long cut your side, short cut mine. And the great thing about this is it'll cut at two different angles going that way. I flip it over, it'll do the opposite and it'll rebuild that crown, but it will not touch the top of the fret. And that's fantastic. Now, to make things easier for me, right here and now, I'm not going to touch these frets because I have to do these different because I'm going to do this, obviously, because I'm working over the body. I do these in halves, I do half, I do that side here, then I'll flip the guitar around and I'll come from the other side and I'll go that way, but making sure I don't dig into the guitar. So I'm just going to do a couple of frets not over the body because I have to really take the, well, I have to really take the top of the body, but I have to be a little bit more careful. So I'm going to show you how it works. I've got the file. I thought I had a cloth knocking about. I'll just put it over here out of the way, look. And all it is, is straight over the fret, follow the radius, flip it 180 degrees, blow, and I have a lovely thin black line along the top of the fret. It means I've not touched the top of the fret, it means I've not lost any height, and I always clean the file after one fret always move to the other file and again this is profiled it has already got that profile in there and all I'm going to do is just tidy up any inconsistencies and wrap them around over the edges straight over the top and over that side and I can just come at a slight angle if I want just to clean everything up and that one is finished and we've still got that black line down the centre and that is now beautifully crowned. If I take the uh, fret rocker, which I put on, like I said, I always put tools away when I move on to a different section of the job. But there you go, this is one we've done. And just to check that nothing's altered, that we're not removed. If we'd remove hides, we'd be rocking now. And there's no rock. And I'm going to show you one more. Clean the file before we move on. Okay, clean again. Next one. Lovely thin black line down the centre there. That black line is probably at 0 0.3, 0 0.4 millimetres wide. That's fine. Again, profiling file. Some of these will need a bit more work than others because some have got a flatter top. Just slightly at an angle. And that's those two done. Beautifully crowned, ready for polishing those two. Uh, again, check the next two down. Just check we've not altered anything. Well, we haven't because we've not removed anything off the height because we still have a black line down the centre. So we always maintain the height. 
it's just about getting that lovely crown shape. So that's two done. I'll mark these off so I know these two. I can tell we're done by looking at them, but just put a dot each side. And I know those two are done. So I need to crack on, get all the rest of them done. And work my way around here, get these done. Like I say, I'll be doing the rest of them off camera. I'm going to get these crowned. Once these are crowned, I'm knocking off for the night. We're getting toward 7pm. I've been in here. I'd set me up in times from 10 10 a.m. till 6 p.m. but I'm normally in here 6 a.m. and I'll be leaving here about 7 p.m. so I'm normally doing 13 hours on and off but I don't I don't bust the gore. We've got quite a bit of material off some of these frets. Like I say but I do like to I like my opening hours to be what they are as shown on the interweb there because it gives me bit of relaxed time and if I want to take an hour off or whatever or nip out you know that's it but anyway I'm going to crack on get these done once these are done I'm knocking off for the night we'll come back in the morning or maybe even tomorrow afternoon and finish this guitar off all I've got left to do now is crown them get the frets polished once the frets are polished we're going to glue the nut back on then we're going to get the new new pickups in to get the electrics redone and then we can look at setting up so after tonight I'll be thinking with polishing and all the electrics and everything, we're going to have another three hours on this. Probably about half an hour now, two and a half, two hours, four to five minutes, maybe three hours tomorrow. So a lot of work goes into this. For uh, certainly for £150, you're getting money's worth, I think. But that is it for now. I will see you in the morning. Fret friends, you are seeing something I've never done before. And I've totally forgot about this file I bought from Elmer. Elmer Tools. And by this crowning file is by Elmer and I went and bought this one just specifically for this job for crowning frets uh, that are over the body and it's got this lovely curve in there that you can use so I'm going to look for the thinnest piece and that's this side and I'm just going to this is this is specifically for this kind of work and I don't need to use my Z file I've already done that one I'm going to have a go on this one And you see it's not touching the body at all, but it is crowning the fret. And I just have a look at that, and that is beautiful. That is really doing the job. That is so easy. Just make sure I don't slip when I'm here. So I've got my thumb just behind it. I saw Danny Lint using one of these at leicestershaluthia.co.uk and he says they're brilliant. So I went and bought one. Oh, and that's fantastic. That is doing the job for me. So, there you go. So, I haven't got to go on the other side. I am going to check the level of these, though, because I've not checked that. What have I done with my fret rocket? It's still here. Look, it's still here. So, just checking everything. And that is it. And that has made it so much easier, this end. And that's just absolutely fantastic. So, Brilliant piece of kit. I think this was about 60 quid. And what, I've got this one here to do, I'm not doing yet. And this, I use a flat bit when I'm not over the body. And this is a nice, this feels good in the hand, really does. Is it scratching the fret salt? No, it isn't. One thing Danny says, watch out for, does it scratch the fret salt worse? And no, it does not. So that is brilliant. Just check that we're maintaining the height. We've got no fret rock anywhere. And that's fantastic. So that's saving me. That's even saving me turning the guitar around. So that's brilliant. So just these three to do. Once they're done, got to finish off. Finish all this off. This lot off with this file, and I will be done. Brilliant. Cracking on this morning. Polishing the frets, six grits of sandpaper, uh, 600 grit right through to 2000. So you've got 600, 800, 1000, 1200, 1500, 2000. Before I hit the frets for polishing, we're going to remove the uh, black marker and the deeper scratches using some 400 grit. Now, this is a thicker paper, um, it's not coarse, coarse, but this will remove the main scratches and any black marker pen that's on 
left on there. So we do this slightly different with this paper. So we're just going straight across the top of the fret into the sides. And again, next one, this paper works quickly. It will diminish the scratches all going that way because we're only polishing this direction backwards and forwards. I'm donning my glove. I always cut off these two fingertips and the thumb fingertip because I only polish with these fingers. Like so. And like I say, just removing the black pen and the deeper of the scratches. And once that's done, I'm going to show you how I polish, but I'm not going to film all of it. So I've got them first three done. And this is how I polish. There's plenty of paper here to do 24 frets. You do top section eight, middle section eight, last section eight. Now there's only 21 frets on this, which is great, but we'll just take a little portion of paper and straight over the top into the far side, opposite you now, this far side, I mean that side there, then back over the top, and that's the first polish. Second one, we move the paper across just a little, the width of another fret, and same again. And just start doing that polish. We're gonna go with finer grits each time, and it's gonna remove more scratches until there are no scratches, and we've got a glass-like fret. But that's the first two done. That's just using, removing the pen and the scratches and the first of six other papers. So it's gonna take me a while to do this. Um, it's a little bit of scratching still left here, but as we go with finer papers, they will all disappear. We're gonna finally finish everything off with uh, extra fine steel wool, and these will be glass-like and scratch-free once done. So yeah, best part. And this is where it's most rewarding. And there you go. And we've got a start. smell nice especially formulated for the darker finger wall boards picking parfero ebony rosewood it'll lift off any grime slightly conditioned the top of the wood stop it drying out and cracking but there you go that's all that gone this can all win the bin now I've got in the steel wall don't need that anymore need some fresh for the next job but yeah stunning I'll leave the blue tape on until I've treated the fingerboard, so I have a spray version of lemon oil. And you don't have to saturate it, just enough to give a little bit of cover there. Let it soak in 5-10 minutes, wipe it off, let it stand another 5 minutes, wipe it off again. And then we can look at getting, uh, I'm not going to put the knot on yet, we're going to get the electrics done. 15 minutes once this is all dried and been wiped off. So I'll leave that to do its job, 10-15 minutes, going to get myself a cup of tea. And we'll come back, we'll get the pick, new pickups in, get the electrics done, get the knot glued back on. And uh, we can commence with the job quick one guys because I am losing the light a little bit and um, I'm not going to show the work I'm doing but I'm going to explain what I'm doing and we have a iron gear blues engine going in the neck and an iron gear rolling mill going in the bridge uh, fantastic I love zebra pickups my favorites I always go for zebra pickups myself so I'm going to use the old 
And give me a second, got to use the old pickle rings. La -da 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 -da. Brand new screws and springs for the pickups. And uh, two humbucker guitar. Just for removing this um, tape. We've got the soldering iron on using my Hakko FX Triple Eight D. And what I'm going to do, well, I'm going to mount the pickups in a minute. Once I've got them in the pickup rings. And uh, I'll just explain what I'm going to be doing because I'm losing the light. I'm not going to film any of this. I will come back and show you what they look like when I've got everything in. It's a very simple um, wiring diagram on these. It's just got a, I've got two volumes. I think it's not neck volume, bridge volume. And you've got a master tone for both. It's a push pull, well it's a pull push pot for the tone. Uh, both the split coils will be wired to the tone pot, the pull push tone pot. Very straightforward and simple design. I'm just tidying up as I go along here. It's getting on a bit, it's Friday evening. I've just had, we just had a tea, we had a chippy tea tonight, me and the wife, as you do. And I'm ready for a drink and relax an evening tonight because uh, I've got a busy day tomorrow. I've got a busy weekend. I've had a few people let me down on guitars, which I'm not happy about because time is of the essence, uh, especially with me being isolating. And I'm, it's, I've got to go back to work in 25, 26 days. And I want to make the most of every single day I have off. So I've cancelled, I've actually cancelled some myself and I've taken them off the list. Loads of people have been messing me about for too long. Uh, but most of you, they're absolutely fine. I've got a couple on there. I'm going to give them a couple of days to get back to me. If, uh, if I don't hear within a couple of days, I'm going to, have to stick them to the back of the list. I've actually got cover. I've got one guy bought me a guitar in Sapphire at short notice. He'll bring me another one in Monday. And I've got some other guys to contact who are quite local. So I'm going to bring some locals in to replace those that have let me down. Uh, but hopefully we'll get through the list quicker. I've now whittled my list down. It was 43 this morning. I've kicked some off. Uh, I've now got the list down to 37, but I have finished four guitars in the last two days. So uh, it's all pretty much legit. But anyway, like I say, I'm going to get these pickups into the pickup rings. I'll leave... Have I dropped another thing today? I'll leave the plastic covers on. Do remember that the wire bit goes to the bottom of the um, guitar body. So I'm going to get some springs in there. Uh, once these are all soldered in, I will come back and show you what I have done. I'm going to get the wiring inside nice and tidy. The actual wiring, the uh, original wiring was not very tidy at all. I will tidy all that up. We'll get it all nice and neat inside there. And um, yeah, these pickups are going to sound amazing. I am certain of it. I couldn't resist showing before I've got everything soldered in. There's no better look in rock than that, is there? Than a nice maple top with zebra pickups just looks absolutely fantastic i think i'm going to do pretty much the same on my hamer <clears throat> i have a hamer studio in aztec gold and i'm thinking that look is going to be great i've already bought a neck pickup zebra brand new one seymour duncan 59 for my hamer just so i can split the coils on the neck because i want to split coil on the neck not so much in the uh, bridge position but i might swap the bridge position as well i do have a cream Super distortion to go in my studio, but I'm thinking maybe I'll just go full zebra. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, come on, is anything better looking than that? That just looks amazing. So that's it. I'm going to get everything wired in, get some strings on, and because uh, this one needs to be done for tomorrow, because the guy's coming up after one o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Now I'm doing it. I've got a church course on tomorrow that uh, my wife and I are part leading, um, and we're going to be doing that in the morning. So I've got no time to do this in the morning. So this is one I am going to finish tonight. I will shoot the last part of the video in the morning when I've got better light, but um, I'll not be doing any work tomorrow at all. Instead of Sunday off, I'm going to have tomorrow off. So that's it. Uh, next time you see this, it's going to be finished. I'll leave the back plate off so you can see the electrics, how I wired them. Uh, but yeah, but that is it. So back tomorrow. Back and we are doing the final setup on the guitar. Um, so things I need to do, a few things I need to check. I'm going to set the relief in the neck. That's the amount of smiley forward bow I'm going to need. Or, or, or just a, a little bit of a bend in the neck. Um, I like to measure it round about 0.25 millimetres under the 6th fret. Or between the 5th and 7th frets. So this kind of area. 
I've right, set the action above the 12th fret, uh, which I've already done now. I've gone slightly higher. I normally recommend the gap from the bottom of the string, top of the fret to the bottom of the string on the treble side, 1.5 millimeters, and on the bass side, 1.75. But in this case, I've gone 1.75 on the treble and two millimeters on the bass side. That's because I still need to cut the knot. And when I cut the knot, the strings are gonna drop again. It's probably gonna give us just about the right amount at the 12th fret. So that's already done. Um, I'm going to cut the nut slots in a minute. What I need to do first though is stretch the strings into tuning so we've got the right amount of tension on the neck. Check everything again. Check the intonation. Once that's done, I'm going to cut the nut. Now because of time this morning, because I've got a, uh, I've got a really important meeting, uh, a group session this morning at church. Um, it's a big day. Uh, I only have, well we're starting that in about an hour and ten minutes, so I'm not going to film everything. Uh, I'm just going to explain to you what I am doing. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to stretch the strings in because I've already set the neck, the relief. I need to check the intonation and cut the knot slots. That's really it. So I'm just, just stretching the strings in. Set of D'Addario 942s on here. Or D'Addario, whatever you call them. These are EXL 120s. Don't worry about the rattle. If you pull a string there, pluck it there, it's going to rattle. If you play it in the playing position, it's fine. If there are any buzzes and rattles anywhere that shouldn't be, we will sort them out. One thing I don't like on this guitar, and it's the only thing I don't like on this guitar, is the nut. It's horrible. Let's take them another 40, 45 quid. I had to change that myself. But, you know, I'm sure it'll be changed in the future. If you're going to spend £200 on a guitar, £225 on a guitar, new pickups and a fret lever and all that, you might as well chuck another 40 quid at it. these strings in again. I hate doing the toppies. That's good. No time, I only did the top E once. Well, like I said, I'm close to tuning, not proper tuning. I never tune a guitar, you're not going to tune a guitar properly while it's laying down. When you put it in a playing position, everything's going to be sharp. It's just the way gravity works. So we're just going to get close. Beautiful. So string stretch, we're in tune. We're now going to check the relief. That looks pretty good. Just grab a feeder gauge, 0.25 at the sixth. Will make me happy. 0.25 at the sixth. A little bit. At the seventh, it's pretty good. I think that will do a tiny, tiny bit lower than I normally would have it, but that's fine. Just gonna make sure that the truss rod is actually tight. We don't want it loose. I 
That's just nipped. That's absolutely fine. I'm happy with that. Check again. That looks good. So yeah, that's where we are. Right, okay, that's great. Just check the tuning again. Very good, so I'm going to check the intonation while we're here. A little bit flat, need to move the saddle that way, toward the neck. If it's flat at the 12th fret, we go left, flat and left at the four letters. If it's sharp at the 12th fret, we move the saddle right, sharp and right, both five letters. So we are a little bit flat, 12th fret, so we're just going to slightly toward the neck beautiful again flat quite a bit flat so we're going to be saddle toward the neck again Beautiful. Nice. 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 Try a bit sharp on the E. We're just going to send the saddle to the right or Toward stop tail piece. Okay, so we set the information. All I've got to do now is cut the nut slots. I'm not going to film this. Use my Hosco nut files or nut slot files. I'm going to bring this one down above the first fret, bottom of the string, 0.3 millimeters on that side. 0.2 millimeters on that side and we're going to gradiate, gradiate down ever so gradually. Once that's done we'll stretch the strings in once more, tune it in and the guitar will be finished. We are friends and we are just about all done. I say just about all done because, um, I'll just show you the guitar, I did leave the back control plate off just to show that the electrics have been done and yeah, it's not super neat, but it's about as neat as you can get it when there's that many wires in there. I have cable tied everything off. Uh, nice stuff. The pickups look amazing, don't they? They're fantastic. But this has had the full bit. We've had a fret level, cut the nut, complete setup, new pickup installation. Um, and every nut and bolt has been checked and tightened. I also fixed one of these strap pins, which was a little bit loose. But why I'm talking to you and trying to remember everything I've done, I'm going to put these, um, put the back plate back in. So yeah, recap. Fret level, setup. Fret level includes obviously recrowning and polishing the frets. Um, so you get them all level, recrown them, polish them. You treat the fingerboard with some mineral oil. Every nut and bolt has been checked, tightened where it needed to be tightened. Uh, it's had a complete electrics overhaul. New pickups installed, we've taken out the Roswell, the weedy Roswell humbuckers and replaced them with an iron gear set. We do have a rolling mill, I believe, in the bridge and a blues engine in the neck. Fantastic pickups these. Why go and pay £80 for Seymour Duncans when you can get these for £35 each? Uh, I say that, I say why would you pay £80 for Seymour Duncans? I've just gone and paid £85 for a Seymour, in fact £88 for a Seymour Duncan uh, for my Hamer. But I think my Hamer deserves... Pickles. I love Seymour Duncan pickups, but I also love these Iron Gear ones. I think they're fantastic value, they're superbly well made. I do believe they are made in Korea by Artec, who make pickups for everyone and, and have done for many, many years. So if you ever see Artec pickups for 20 quid, don't think, oh, I bet they're cheap rubbish, they're not, they're amazing. If you can buy Artec brand, even better, because 
they've not had to, they've not been made for a third party, they've actually made them for themselves. And they're good. But anyway, back plate is on. The guitar needs a good wipe over. I've not plugged it in and played it, but that's okay. Uh, I will get to do that before the owner comes and collects it. Fantastic looking thing. I don't know what these cost. I don't think they're that expensive, but certainly under £200 or, or around about the £200 bracket, I believe. This one's a bit of a clean, certainly wants plugging in, but it is finished. So let's remind you of what it is. Seymour Duncan. Seymour Duncan. It is a Harley Benton SC Custom Line. SC standing for single court. It's had some locking strap pins put on there. I've changed the pickups, giving it a setup, fret level with the frets. The only bad thing about this is the knot is horrible. Uh, it's a graphite knot, I would certainly replace that, but that is it, it is all done. And I have got to go, I've got a meeting in a minute. Um, so I'm just going to wrap this one up before I do. Remind you my website, facebook.com forward slash ng17. That's facebook.com forward slash n-g-o-n-e-s-e-v-e-n. You can always go to fretfriend.co.uk. But I am Victor, I am your fret friend, and until the next time, as always, God bless you. Be good to each other. I'll see you in the next one.